So finally, I think I have all of the pieces together for Kong. And I wanted to wait because there was a couple items, especially for the suspension on the bike, that we just couldn't get figured out. So in this video today, we're going to go over everything. We're going to go over the bar setup that I'm doing. We're going to go over the engine performance modifications with exhaust. We are going to go over the seat. We are going to go over the suspension. And we are going to go over the mid controls that I'm going to be doing on Kong. So definitely stay tuned until the end of this video. If you're new to this channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button give this video a like let's see what we got going on for this road glide what's up guys i just wanted to tell you something very 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 important before we dive into this video please be aware be vigilant i know that there are scammers on instagram on tiktok and especially now on youtube do not respond to any comments in the comments section from anyone trying to impersonate me, Cycle Fanatics, telling you that you have won something. First of all, nobody would ever do that. I'm telling you right now, I would never tell anyone that they won anything in the comments section. If you don't see that it's coming from my personal email or a phone call from me, do not, do not respond because it is a scam. I cannot emphasize this enough. Scammers are going around to everybody channel it's happening now it's been happening and it will always happen be vigilant do not respond be smart do not give them any information if you do see something like this please kindly report it so again if you are not contacted by me personally via phone call or email do not respond make sure also if you do get an email from anybody click on where it says from and make sure that it is my official email all right Back to the video, guys. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have the bike here. Really quick, before we get into this video, I wanted just to touch on the Let's Roll Dolly Lift system that I previously showed you guys in another video because there was a lot of people um, commenting about this lift that I always used. It's from Harbor Freight. And they're like, oh, this lift could do the same thing as the Let's Roll Lift. And it just can't. It absolutely cannot. And I wanted to show you guys a couple couple uh, reasons why and I, I just wanted to show you the reasons why it's just the let's roll dolly lift system is just so much better than anything else out there so if you guys could see on this lift only the back wheels are caster which they turn the front are stationary only rolling forwards and back and another problem with this is these wheels are really small they're probably about, I don't know, two inches in diameter only, and they're steel. So like also, I don't have like the nicest garage, you know? I've seen a lot of garages that are just absolutely beautiful, but I do have it nice and clean. It's a small like 12 by 30 garage with my office in the back and a storage closet. But I try to keep it clean. I epoxied the floor in the kind of like a battleship gray. I don't want to destroy it. And the problem, with this lift is that the steel small wheels, they destroy the epoxy floor because they're really hard, they're really small, and it just, it will destroy this floor. So there's another reason, there's a bunch of other reasons why I don't wanna use this lift. And let me give you a few examples. All right, so we got it up on the lift. In order to turn the whole motorcycle around in my garage, it would be almost impossible because it the bike just rolls so difficultly on these wheels, on this lift, not only because they're small and they're steel, it's because the forward wheels do not turn, only the back. So it's like, you gotta hold on to this handle, you gotta you got kinda shimmy the bike around up and forward, up and forward. It's a really big pain in the ass. With the Let's Roll Dolly system, I could literally just take this bike and spin it 360 degrees right in the middle of the garage with ease. And I'll show you guys that. Also, another problem is a lot of people really didn't understand is is that they were saying that the let's roll dolly lift system, that the lift should be, should be attached to this piece. 
Absolutely not, because the problem with a lift like this is you cannot get an oil pan underneath. You can't do an oil change. But with the Let's Roll lift system here, you can because you could remove that. Once the bike is sitting on the dolly, you remove the jack and you could get a oil pan underneath and change your fluids, which I love. So that's the problem with this lift. This is really, this is really difficult to move. Trust me when I tell you. And I don't feel comfortable even moving the bike. I don't even want to move it because that's how hard it is to move this bike on this lift. So let me just show you guys really quick how crazy simple this is. You position it under the bike from the opposite side of the kickstand. You start jacking it, the bike will automatically come up straight. Now once you have the bike lifted up, what you're going to want to do, because I think I showed it incorrectly in the first video, what you want to do is make sure these are unlocked. You want to come from this side and you want to slide the dolly right underneath. I got to raise the bike a little more. Then you want to slide the dolly in from the kickstand side, making sure that the pads are perfectly even underneath like so and start lowering it down onto the dolly. Then we could slide the lift, the jack, right out. Now the bike is sitting on this dolly. That's a million times easier to move. So anybody that's saying they could move a 900 pound bike on that lift as easy as they can on the let's roll lift, they're definitely lying. Mind you, my garage floor is not perfectly level, so that's why I'm kind of trying to hold it up so it doesn't start rolling down. But if you had a perfect, smooth surface, a teenager could move this bike and I'm not even kidding it's that easy and with the big caster wheels polyurethane they're not going to damage my floor I could still and let me I'll show you what you can't do with the other lift is take my drain bucket and slide it right underneath the dolly and you have all the bolts right here, the drain plugs exposed, so you can still change your oil. You're not gonna do that with the other lift. Absolutely fantastic for small spaces, small garages, where you wanna move your motorcycle around. This is by far my favorite solution. So if you're interested, there's a link down below in the description, click on it. It'll take you to Let's Roll. Veterans get a discount. But anyway, we're gonna dive right into this. Oh my God. So I've been waiting to tell you guys what I've been doing and I'm gonna tell you instead of you waiting piece by piece, I'll tell you exactly what's happening. Then obviously when it goes over to Dave over by JD Cycle Works, obviously I'll bring you guys that footage, how it's done, how it's installed, how it looks. And then we'll be doing reviews about all these different products that are so uh, different compared to Silverback. So the only product I have here are the mid controls, which I'll actually show them to you because I still haven't brought them over to Dave. As far as the rest of the products, Dave has them. So I'll just go over, I have some pictures on my phone, I'll go over each product, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing, and we'll basically go over why I chose these products over, let's say, some other products we used in the past. All right guys, so let's start it off 
with the top here. So what we're doing with the bar setup, I'm not going with the LA Choppers hammerhead bars anymore, even though, trust me when I tell you, probably had to be my favorite bar that I've ever had. But we're, I'm trying to do something more, a little more different. I'm trying to get a little more comfort. So what we're going with on this bike is we're going with an entire Krauss setup. So we're doing the Krauss triple tree or as they say, top clamp. We're going with the entire Krauss billet top clamp. We're going with a eight inch pullback riser and we're going with a ODI bar, which is pretty much like a mid bend bar. And then to finish off all that with the gauges, we're going with a billet gauge bezel that's basically going to be able, I believe, to mount on the back of the risers. I believe it might be able to be mounted on the front. I'm not sure about that, but it's definitely for what I see and what I like, it's gonna be mounted on the back. So let me show you guys at the bike what exactly is going to happen. Okay, so obviously these bars are gonna be gone. This gauge cluster is going to be gone. All this plastic here on the side, pretty much every single thing is going to be gutted. You're gonna be able to see that top, that triple clamp that's there. That is going to be replaced with the billet one from Krauss. Then from there, this lock is going to be much lower. We're going to have that on as well. Then we're going to have the eight inch risers coming out of that, out of that triple clamp we're going to have the ODI bar set up on it so basically we're going to have eight inches on the risers and about four inches on the bar because it's a mid bend so we're probably going to be getting the same height as I had on the LA chopper 12 inch hammerhead bars that was kind of my goal but they are going to be pulled back a bit because of the pulled back riser setup and then I'm also going to be able to adjust the bars front or back to get even more comfort. So that is going to look absolutely tricked out here. That everything is going to be basically gone. We'll also be able to, I'll show you later and explain to you, deal with the front suspension. All of that is going to be in black. Black triple tree, black risers, black bars. We're also gonna be getting the new clamps by Krauss that I think are a lot smaller. We're gonna be replacing the lever clamps right here. We're gonna be getting some harness extensions. This way, every everything's gonna be routed through the middle really nice and neat. I've sat on a bike with this setup and probably has to be, even though the LA Choppers Hammerhead 12 inch bars were super comfortable. And let me tell you, I love those bars. But the setup with the Krauss, with the ODI mid bend bar and the eight inch pullback riser, wow. That's all I gotta say is wow. Not only the hand position is perfect, the height is perfect, and then it's a lot closer and you have a lot more adjustments as far as moving the bars back or moving them forward. And with that billage gauge cluster on the top, it'll remove all the plastic on the side, really clean everything up. It looks really, really sharp. All right, so the next thing let's talk about really quick. I don't want to spoil everything about the seat. Of course, it's going to be a Saddleman. It's going to be a Saddleman SDC Pro Gripper seat without the backrest. Don't want to tell you what colors. We'll leave that uh, a little bit of a secret and a surprise for you guys, but it's definitely going to be a Saddleman SDC Pro Gripper. Okay, let's go to the suspension. And this is why I haven't told you guys yet or until today about what was going to happen with the entire upgrades going on to the bike because we were still tossing things up with the suspension. This is what was going to happen and this is what I had to change. So what I really wanted for this bike is I wanted to get a better suspension and I wanted to get more travel on the suspension. And I wanted to also raise the bike in the same process in order to get more clearance to take some turns instead of always scraping my floorboards. So what we went with was all Legend suspension components. We went two over. So that's two inches taller on the front and we were going to go 14 inches on the back. So that would raise the bike and maybe you guys can help me. I'm looking for a longer kickstand. Everything I see online, I only see plus one. Is there a plus two? If anybody has this set up, if anybody did raise their bike, if anybody could hit me up in the comments or an email, help me out. Let me know where you guys got your kickstand from. Also with the suspension being that 
I'm raising it, we had to get different fork tubes. So the problem is I ordered them from Diamond Lane Cycles, beautiful component, black anodized, cross-hatched billet tubes, and they were two over. But what happened was, we found out, is that the Legend suspension comes in a little bit shorter than the 24 and 7 8 tubes that are Diamond Lane. So now I had a problem where the Legend suspension cartridge would not work with the Diamond Lane tubes. So then what happened was I canceled that order from Diamond Lane and then we started looking for some other different tubes. There really wasn't any to fit the Legend cartridges, which were I believe like 24 and 3 8. The only one that would fit was actually an OEM tube from a trike, which was at the same dimension, like 24 and 3 8. So those would work but they don't come in black. And if I'm gonna do all this work, I really wanted to change the, the look of the front. So I didn't want this, this is staying this color, uh, this aluminum, this brushed aluminum, but I really wanted to change the top tube color. So then I was kind of like, ah, we gotta find a different solution. So then we kind of, I was looking, we went back onto the Krauss site and we were able to find some 24 and 7 8 two over cartridges from Krauss that are fully adjustable and they're also made and specced to the rider's weight, which is great. We ordered them and that's what I'm gonna be using. I actually had to tell them my weight, 215 pounds, and they're actually going to spring the front cartridges for my weight, which is the best. They are also fully adjustable. What's awesome is with removing all of that top stuff, the existing bars and gauge cluster and all that plastic and having that billet aluminum top clamp from Krauss, I'm going to be able to adjust my front suspension with ease and get it dialed in perfectly because it's all going to be accessible. We're going to stick with the Legend suspension 14 inch shocks on the back. They're gonna be the Revo A's. Black reservoir canisters are gonna be on the back. It is going to look really sweet. The bike is going to be higher. Suspension is going to be able to be tuned in and dialed in perfectly for my weight and riding style. The bike is gonna be higher, so this way we don't scrape. If we wanna take turns a little harder, we're not scraping floorboards or not as easily. Okay, the next thing we're gonna be talking about, and this is, the last two are pretty big. If you guys could see what's in this box, I don't know if you can. This is from Arlen Ness. And just so you know, in the past, I did have some problems with the big brake kit from Arlen Ness. But Arlen Ness does make a shitload of awesome and beautiful products. And I seen this product on a bike in Sturgis and I absolutely fell in love with it. So our existing controls on Kong, meaning the floorboards, the bolt side floorboards, the brake lever, pedal, shifter linkage, everything is gone right? This is Arlen Ness mid controls. I'm putting mid controls on the bike because that's what I'm more comfortable with. The way, because I'm so tall, I guess, my legs are kind of too forward and a lot of the pressure I feel when I put in a lot of miles throughout the day, almost all the pressure is on my ass and on my back and on my tailbone. With the controls being more towards the back, I'll be able to apply that pressure more to my legs and to my feet rather than on my back. And the position of my legs more further back, I feel it will be more comfortable for me. Because what, because what I see, I notice what I do on long rides, I don't necessarily, the only time I use the highway bars is to stretch my legs out. I don't do it for long periods of time. And when my feet are on the floorboards, I tend to scoot them back because it's just more comfortable for me. I tend not to leave them forward. So when I seen this setup on a bike at Sturgis and the quality and the finish of this product, absolutely amazing. I'll show you a picture of it, but even the shifting is just less linkage, it's more crisp down and up shifts, as well as the brake lever, everything, it is, it is wicked. But this is the entire mid control setup here. And all of these products, let me tell you, I don't know if you could see it from the camera, but let me tell you, it is absolutely like really, really nicely done. 
we have a shifter peg and a brake peg. And then we're gonna be putting on, I don't wanna open this stuff up, but if you could see, those are my pegs. It's like almost like, I can't say it's like a mini floorboard, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty big, they're big enough. And I'll have this area right here um, on the Santoro Fabrics crash bar if I want to stretch my legs out. But we're gonna have to wait and see. I seen the bike, I love the look. I feel I'll be more comfortable with my legs further back. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's for everybody, so, but this is for me and this is what we're gonna be trying to do on the bike. I haven't seen it done on a bike yet on YouTube, so this is gonna be something really, really interesting and really something new. So that's what we're doing for mid controls. I'm super psyched about all these components because it's it's just really different from how we did silverback okay so now whoa for the engine so this if you guys don't know it's a 2022 road glide standard with a 107 we've did a 128 we did a 130 on silverback and even though i blew my 128 in the scorching heat about 105 degrees with no fans on it in manhattan traffic um we didn't have a good experience with that that was kind of my fault. But then we had the 130 and Dave put that in when I had almost 10,000 miles. We got rid of Silverback, had about 23,000 miles. So I had about 13,000 miles on that motor. That motor ran like a top. Had the fans on it, kept it cool. Even though we were in Sturgis, 105, 107 degrees at Devil's Tower, fans were running, no issues. But the plan starting next year is we are going to be doing a lot of riding. And I don't mean the type of riding we did on Silverback. And mind you, we put on 23,000 miles in about 14, 15 months that I had the bike, minus obviously all of the months and months spent at JD Cycle Works getting all the work done. The bike was only two years old and I had 23,000 miles on it, but really I only had the bike for about 16 months. The other eight months, it basically sat at Dave's at JD Cycle Works to get the 128 done and all of its upgrades and then the 130 and then more upgrades, the paint. So it was probably maybe even done in 12 months, that whole 23,000 miles, which is, you know, quite a bit. It's not like, you know, two lane life where they're putting 50, 60,000 miles um, a year. I just don't have the time to do that. I would love to, but 23,000 miles is a lot of miles. But anyway, what we have planned for next year, we are going to be doing a lot of miles. And there's some information I'll tell you guys in a couple months, but we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a lot of riding, a lot of events, and a lot of places next year for the channel. And I just I want something that is going to be the most. And I'm not saying, so hold up, I'm not saying I would tell anybody to get a big board kit. I love them, especially when you have the right person doing it. But obviously you can't compare stock reliability to a 160 horsepower monster built motor. You just can't. That's Everybody should know that. And hopefully everybody does. Being that we plan on really in the next two, three years on this bike, pumping out some crazy great content, pumping out a lot of miles on a bike. I'm keeping it simple. I'm keeping it simple. So what we're gonna do, because we have a great platform with the 107, it's a great motor, we are going to do this. We are going to do stage two plus, and I say plus. So I'm not really, it's not really gonna be a stage three, maybe, but it's gonna be probably a stage two plus. So what we're going to do is, we're going to put a high flow air intake on it. We are going to run the holy grail of cams, SNS 475 and we might play around maybe with some injector and throttle body stuff. I'm not sure yet, but for the most part, it's going to be stage two. And that's why I said maybe stage two plus. So we're going to do a stage two on it, 118 horsepower, 117 horsepower, depending on how good the motor is, because every Hi. motor, oh, Amazon lady scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so anyway, depending on every motor, every motor is different. So we see numbers by Dave after he does a stage two with a 475 on a 107. Some engines he gets 112 horsepower out of them. Some he'll get 116. And there's been others that just be, that's just been phenoms 
and got 120 or 121. So it's crazy. So it all depends how tight the motor is, how tight the motor was put together, are the tolerances a little closer and all of that, right? So I think any if we get around 118 horsepower and close to 130 foot-pounds of torque, with the weight that we're gonna be removing from this bike, the little bit of weight that we are, it's going to be plenty. That's the only reason why I want it, keep it as simple as possible, because most of you guys that are watching aren't going to be putting 23,000 miles on a bike. If you're gonna put, and I'm expecting to put, 20 to 30,000 miles on a bike every year, I just wanna keep my, how should I say this? I wanna keep my risk at the lowest possible. Also, if I'm away somewhere far, if I have, say, a T-Man Performance Bull Motor, chances are I'm not really, not everybody's gonna be able to work on it. Not everybody is going to be, uh, is going to have the parts for that matter. So I just wanna keep it simple as possible. To have enough power, have enough torque, to be happy, to be able to move out of its own way, and I think that's what I'm gonna do on this bike. And like I said again, love the big board kits. We probably will go back to it at some point, but not now because I am planning on doing some really large journeys in the next couple years. So now if you're asking about exhaust, no more two into two. We are going to do full two into one outlaw. Chrome works in chrome two into one exhaust. It's gonna sound absolutely vicious. You're gonna have that back pressure from the two into one and I already have the exhaust, it's over by Dave. Also seen it on a bike um, at the Chromeworks uh, rig while I was at Sturgis. It sounds absolutely sick and it looks amazing. So we're gonna shed a lot of weight to coming down from a two into two down to a two into one. It's going to sound totally different. As you guys know, a two into one, they're definitely louder, more thumpier because you have both cylinder pressures going in and funneling into one pipe instead of two. So it's a totally different sound. And we should be able, because it's a two into one, we should be able to possibly get some more horsepower out of it. Not much, but hopefully a little bit. All right, and the last thing, guys, uh, after careful uh, thinking and evaluation about the carbon fiber front fender, we're gonna paint it black, yeah. I don't think I'm going to add any more carbon pieces. I'll tell you why. This is the issue. Hoffman Designs make fantastic carbon components. Side covers, front fenders, rear fenders, bags, bag lids, uh, center consoles, everything. The problem is there's about a 16 to 20 week back order. And again, you guys know this, almost everything is hard to get these days. So that's why it, another reason why it took me so long to bring this information to you guys, to tell you guys like what we're doing with the bike because like parts were trickling in. I didn't know if I was gonna get it. What if I told you guys I was gonna get something then it, it never came or they said another four months, which I wouldn't wait. I'd have to go with something different. So we finally got to a place where I could tell you guys everything, but that fender for now, it is going to be painted black while the bike is at the shop by Dave. We'll see how we like it from there. I'm going to tell you though, my second option would be to go with a Road Glide ST front fender. If I can't get it in black, we'll just paint it black. But I don't know, let me know what you guys think. But anyway, man, I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this build. And as soon as I get it back, I'm telling you now, as soon as I get the bike back from Dave, we're going to start on some epic journeys. I don't give a crap if we're in the middle of winter or not here in New Jersey. All right, thanks for watching guys. If you're new to this channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Check out Indie Ridge, www.indieridgeusa.com. Use code FANATICS for 10% off. They make the best damn boots. See you guys later, peace out.